Duke and Clemson. The ninth ranked Tigers looking to reestablish under their legendary coach Dabo Sweeney. First half, this is not the way you want to start it. Look at Riley Leonard, go! Oh, keep your eyes on your luggage. Run, rumble, young man, rumble. And look at him looking back at him. Oh, put it in your face. Mike Tannenbaum, Riley Leonard's a pro, yes? First round pick, Daniel Jones 2.0. Daniel Jones, oh. maybe not quite the speed, but look at the size and the power. Looking like Andrew Luck right there. The Duke quarterback does a little bit, takes it in there. A Duke, a 13-7 lead could have been more if they hadn't had a miscue in the first half. And it's Kate Klubnick. Speaking of miscues, here they come. Uh, down near the goal line, we got a fumble on an exchange, and Duke would recover. And then more Clemson issues. We're now in the fourth quarter, so we're on the other way. It's a first and goal at the one. And take a look at what happens. Bart, we're going the other way again. Yes, this is a 10-point turnaround at least. You talk about big plays, turn games. You, try, you have two turnovers. You know, it's a recipe for disaster in football. Dabo thinking, what the actual heck is going on? And then how about the speed to the corner for Jaquez Moore? Oh, you got to set the edge. And I just talk about when you see the end zone, this is what you have to do. When you get in the red zone, you're trying to have an upset. You have to get seven, not three. They go for the two and they get it. So it's 21-7. Now here's Klubnik, five minutes left in the game, trying to make something happen. But instead, oh, it's Dorian Mausi. With the pick. Oh, the Cameron Crazies lose their minds. Is this a basketball game? 28-7. Felt like it last night. Dabo, what? An incredibly disappointing loss. Uh, that's honestly all my years of football. I I've never been a part of a game like that, ever. I mean, I've been beat. I've had my butt kicked many times in my career. But I, I, I can't, I can honestly say I haven't, I have that's, that's one of the strangest games I've ever been a part of. Man, I ain't quitting, and I ain't throwing this team away. Uh, we're going to bounce back, and we're going to get better. We're going to learn from it. All right, so the seven points for Clemson, the fewest in a game versus an unranked opponent that they've ever had under Dabo Sweeney, who's been there as the head coach since midway through the 2008 season. The 21-point loss tied for his second largest against an unranked team uh, going back a couple of years and so let's bring Heather and Paul in here and, and look Paul you and I have been having these conversations throughout the entirety of what I guess would would constitute the Dabo Sweeney era there was a moment in time there where we thought he might be the one who was ready to surpass Nick Saban and this was going to be the Clemson era of college football as of last night what do we say about that Dabo's dynasty is done. Uh, what else can anyone say, Greeny? It's, it's really been teetering for a couple of years, but what happened last night is simply unexplainable. This is now the third loss out of the last four games for Clemson, and, and quite frankly, I, I don't see any upside. They brought in Garrick Riley. That was supposed to be the savior. They had the quarterback that was going to be Trevor Lawrence's uh, wonder kind, and, and frankly, nothing happened. And they, they didn't lose to a Florida State or a Notre Dame or an Alabama or a Georgia. They lost to Duke, which has a very good quarterback, a nice program, nice being the operative word. They have nowhere to go. And, and Dabo's nonsense after the game isn't going to impress anyone. Uh, this, this program is, is flatlining right now. What was nonsense? What was nonsense is, is, is Dabo speak, Greeny. Uh, this is an, a, a tr an old trick of his. It used to work. It's not working anymore. It's not resonating in that locker room. And those players right now, I think, are just looking at him and going, OK, try, try a different act, Dabo. We've heard this one before. Heather, let me come to you. No one knows more about anything than you know about the college football playoff and how these things work. If you're going to lose a game, as even as bad as that one looked, I suppose the first weekend of September is the right time to do it. What does last night mean for Clemson's hopes of making the playoff? Well, I'm not sure it is the right time to do it, Greeny, because no team has ever lost their season opener and gone on to make the playoff. Mm. And I would also add that no two-loss team has ever made the college football playoff. So what does it mean? It means... We shouldn't be talking about Clemson as a college football playoff team right now because, Greeny, if you go to ESPN.com and look at the top 25 power rankings that were posted last night, Colorado is ahead of Clemson. <laughs> Let me say that again. Colorado, which won one football game last year, is ahead of Clemson in ESPN.com's top 25. That tells you all you need to know right now about where the Clemson Tigers are. Now, that being said, Kate Klubnick is a good quarterback who is going to get better. This was his first game on the field right there as the starter full-time, 
and they have a chance to prove something against Florida State at home on September 23rd. But anyone in their right mind who watched FSU against LSU and Clemson against Duke is crazy if they are picking Clemson to win that game right now based on what we saw. Florida State is the team to beat right now in the ACC. And I know Notre Dame isn't in the ACC, but they also look much better and they play that schedule. They're not officially in there, but they look like the better team as well. Okay, Heather and Paul, stay close by. Much more, including more on Colorado and Dion and everything else. This is our continue. We are back on Get Up. The game is called Fact or Fiction. Heather and Paul back with us. And so, Paul, I will start with you. The huge game this weekend is Bama, Texas. Is Alabama on upset alert? Fact or fiction? Fact. I'm not saying they're going to lose yet. I want to think about this for a couple more days, Greeny, but Texas is a formidable team. They have a great quarterback in, you, in Quinn Ewers. Alabama is doing well. They had a really nice opening game, but listen, uh, they barely won this game last year with Bryce Young. All right, Heather, what do you think? Is Alabama on upset alert? Fact. I agree with our colleague Dan Orlovsky because he said <laughs> yesterday that Texas offensive line has to be better, otherwise this could get ugly fast. But yes, 100%, this game could go either way. All right, next, let's get to what was the story of the first weekend. Heather, if I were to say Deion Sanders in Colorado will be in the playoff conversation towards the end of the season, is that fact or fiction? Fiction! Pump the brakes a minute, everybody. But <laughs> I will say the fact that we are even talking about this and asking this question shows the magnitude of what he has done. What do you think, Paul? Fact or fiction, they'll be in the CFP conversation. Uh, uh, farcical, really. Uh, but remember, <laughs> Dion was predicted to win three games, and I think he'll have that done by September. Uh, they're a really nice program. He is he is owning the sport, but there is absolutely I, I'm afraid I can't believe I'm about to say this, Dion. There's absolutely no chance, no chance whatsoever that they're ever in the conversation past October. Okay, let's keep that one. Which Clip means now they're in it. That one. That's going to be fun because he keeps receipts. I, I want to bring Mike T in here for this one as my longtime <laughs> general manager. Fact or fiction, Caleb Williams is a lock to be the number one overall pick in next year's draft. Fact, Greeny, he is Patrick Mahomes 2.0. He has that sort of ability. He can make plays from the pocket. He can make plays outside the pocket. He has a great arm, great anticipation as this throw is showing here. There are no flaws in Kay Williams' game. He is absolutely the first pick of the draft. Well, he, he might wind up being the first player since Archie Griffin to win the Heisman in back-to-back -back seasons. As far as being the first pick in the draft, there's a lot to get to there. I want to start with this part of it. We had Orlovsky and Ryan Clark here, and they had differing opinions on whether we should put Caleb Williams at number one in pencil or in pen. Listen. He has plays like Patrick Mahomes that are just jaw-dropping. You sit there and go, how does that make, how, how do you make that happen? That being said, as much as I love Caleb, do not write his name in pen as the number one pick in next year's NFL draft. Should I use a Sharpie then? Because I need to use something that you can't erase, that can't wash away. You need to write Caleb Williams' name down as the number one overall pick in as many ways as you can write it. That's a really good discussion, Heather. I'm assuming, I was not here yesterday, but I'm, I'm assuming that Drake May is what Dan is referring to as the other possibility, the quarterback from North Carolina. How do you see that understanding that we are still at the very beginning of this season? I see it as a debate that's going to continue right up until draft day, first of all. And second, I think a lot of it depends on the NFL coaches who are making this decision because they're two different quarterbacks. That's the reality of this situation. And we talk about, I think Dan's word yesterday was Houdini in terms of Caleb Williams. You look at Drake May and what he does in terms of being a pocket passer, a very polished type quarterback, more, um, I don't know what the word is, the NFL prototype, This is that's the guy. But they are both outstanding quarterbacks, and I think the real debate is which style do you prefer as the team that's drafting? What do you think, Paul? I am going to write him down in my own blood, but I'm, I'm that confident. Uh, th this is not a conversation. Uh, you know, I, I love Dan, but but Dan, come on. Uh, Caleb Williams is, is essentially, he's not the same type of quarterback, but but he's as much of a cinch in my mind as Bryce Young was this year. Well, it, it seems to me, Mike T, also, because 
Heather just described the differences in styles. The direction that the sport is going, the direction the NFL going, is much more towards the player, the quarterback, who can do the things that Caleb Williams can do, as opposed to what Heather was looking for the word, and sort of what quarterbacks used to be in the National Football League. Caleb Williams is what they're going to be in the future. Absolutely, he is the future. That's why Anthony Richardson, who only started 13 games, was a top five pick. It's a, it's a similar <laughs> style of, of play, and it's one, candidly, that you could come into the league and have immediate success. But so, so I was actually joking on Instagram about two weeks ago when I said he might as well be looking for real estate in Scottsdale, Arizona right now. Caleb Williams is just going to be the first pick. The Cardinals are going to have it. That's obviously super premature. But Dominique Foxworth was on the show here on Friday, and he had an interesting perspective. He was sort of pleading to Caleb Williams not to go to Arizona. Listen to this. Caleb Williams is an outstanding quarterback, and they out here running that organization in this phony tanking scandal trying to get it. I just, I haven't seen them successfully develop a quarterback, and they don't deserve Caleb Williams. So if they do get the number one overall pick, I hope he forces his way to another organization that will properly take care of his career and shepherd him right into the Hall of Fame where his talent suggests that he belongs. So this is an interesting one to me, and I wanted to bring Bart in here from an NFL player's perspective as well, because what Caleb Williams will be, let, let's say he has the kind of season that we were expecting him to have and is exactly what we think he will be, which is a lock to be the first pick in the draft. He'll be the first of these guys, Paul, in the NIL era. You can't watch a college football game without seeing a commercial that has Caleb Williams on it. Now, I don't know how much money he's making, and it's probably not as much as the first pick in the draft makes immediately. But the fact that he is making a lot of money, do you think that could influence, as we go forward, players making those kinds of decisions? If they have an option of going back to school for a year, if they don't like the team that they see up there at number one, could you see that being the future? Greeny, you could certainly threaten it, and we need to go back, what, to Eli Manning uh, mm -hmm. for the last time this was really uh, an issue. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.